Hi dear students, in this session we will discuss about optical amplifiers. The basic function of the optical amplifier is amplification of the optical signals. That means here amplification takes place without conversion to electrical signal. So that optical amplifiers can amplify the optical signals without conversion to electrical signal. For doing this process, amplifier needs pump energy and amplification medium. The pump energy is externally provided, that means it is the biasing provided to the amplifier. Usually the amplifier is a PN junction. So amplification medium is a PN junction active region. So this is the basic block diagram of the optical amplifier. You can see here that pump energy is provided here and also optical input signal is provided here. And this amplification medium is the structure of the amplifier that means the pn junction act as the amplification medium that means when pn junction is formed the depletion region act as a uh, active region and that medium act as the that uh, that active region act as the amplification medium and usually the pump energy is provided with the positive biasing of the pn junction so when we are positive positively bias this pn junction the number of electron concentration increases and when we are giving an output signal, output optical signal to this PN junction or to this amplifier, then that light energy will be absorbed by the electrons and as a result they will, uh, they will be producing stimulated emission of light. We will go to the details uh, of this process uh, when we are discussing the semiconductor optical amplifier. So you can see here in this block diagram of optical amplifier, this is the input signal and it will be amplified at the output side. So this is the basic function of optical amplifier. Next we will go to the general applications of optical amplifications. Basically the optical amplification is done in inline amplification. There will be pre-amplification, power amplification and LAN booster amplification. Based on that the, uh, they are, uh, we will call uh, the amplifiers as inline amplifiers, pre-amplifiers, power amplifiers and land booster amplifiers. Suppose if the amplifiers are used along the optical fiber communication link or optical fiber in the inline then these amplifiers are called inline amplifiers. Usually this inline amplifiers you can see the function. This is an inline amplifier and it has a gain G. Suppose there is an optical transmitter and there is an another optical receiver. This optical transmitter transmits this optical signal which is having voltage like this. And when it is transmitted through this optical fiber, its voltage value or amplitude decreases. So for amplifying that purpose, we are using inline amplifiers along the fiber. So that the output of this amplifier will be increased that means the signal will be amplified here and again when it transmit through the uh, this optical cable again it will be um, it, it will lose some of its um, magnitude or voltage um, voltage so this inline amplifier is used to amplify the voltage levels of the signals when it is transmitting through the optical fiber and the next configuration is power amplifier. You can see that power amplifier. Here there is a transmitter. And you can see power amplifier is used immediately after the transmitter. And then the um, amplified signal will be transmitted through, uh, traveled through this fiber, fiber link. And then it will be received. So here you can see the diagram. That is at the optical transmitter signal strength is, see this is the diagram. This is optical transmitter. Optical transmitter, um, the output signal is this one. And then it, it is immediately giving to the optical amplifier in order to increase the power level so that it, uh, the signal strength is very much increased due to this power amplifier. And then it will be transmitted through the you know, optical fiber cable or long distance fiber link. Uh, when it is transmitting through this long distance fiber link, its ampli um, amplitude will be reduced. And finally it will be received at the optical um, receiver. So this application of this power amplifier um, is that it increase, it will be used immediately after the transmitter and it increases the power level of the signal that means the amplitude of the original signal will be increased so the power amplifier may be employed to boost the signal immediately following the transmitter 
and next case is the pre amplification that means there is a transmitter and there is a uh, fiber link so in the case in this case the amplification is done near to the optical receiver just uh, before the optical uh, receiver section this amplifiers are used so that we are called pre amplifier mm, and you can see here this is a pre amplifier configuration that is there is an optical transmitter and it produces an output signal when it is transmitted through the fiber then its ampli amplitude will be reducing so at the receiver side its amplitude value will be very less so in order to increase its amplitude value we are employing a pre amplifier so that the output of this pre amplifier will be increased and so it will be received at the optical receiver so in the case of optical fiber communication system we will need we are in need of these three types of amplifiers so this diagram shows that here there is an optical transmitter and an optical receiver in between this transmitter and receiver first one we will use the power amplifier then we will use inline amplifier then we will use pre amplifier so this is the general form of the amplifier application so line amplifiers Uh, in the in this application amplifiers replaces the repeat repeaters within a long communication line and in the case of pre amplifiers an optical pre amplifier is placed immediately before a receiver to improve its sensitivity and in the case of power amplifiers power amplifier may be employed to boost the signal immediately following the transmitter based on the types of this ampli um, amplifiers uh, their gain and maximum output power are different uh, figure uh, this table shows the comparison between the gains see in the case of power amplifier it has got a high gain comparing to inline and pre amplifier inline amplifiers have uh, medium gain and pre amplifiers has a uh, low gain and maximum output power um, uh, see in the case of power amplifier high output power is obtained in the case of inline amplifier medium output power and for pre amplifier it, the output power is low and the, if you are comparing the noise figures Mm, uh, power amplifiers as no, uh, noise figure is not very important that uh, that is why we are not discussing it uh, and in the case of inline amplifier uh, it has got good noise figure and pre amplifier low value less than 5 db mm, uh, is essential in the case of pre amplifier next we will go to the types of optical amplifiers there are different types of optical amplifiers and uh, major ones are semiconductor optical amplifier and rare earth doped fiber amplifiers that is edfa that is rare er rbm doped rbm doped fiber amplifier and also there is another classification that is raman and brillouin amplifier and these two soa and edf are mostly used amplifier configurations first we will go to the semiconductor optical amplifier so let us see semiconductor optical amplifier you can see this is the structure of the semiconductor optical amplifier you can see here it is a Uh, it is basically a pn junction you can see this is the p type material and n type material and the junction between these two act as the active region and actually this pn junction um, uh, junction uh, there will be a depletion region formed and that depletion region act as the active region and we are giving light input to this active region so that the light traveling through this we are giving uh, the light input to this when we are giving the light input to this pn junction Uh, the light will be travel the light that is traveling through this active region will be amplified and also at the end of this active region we are providing uh, anti reflective coating that is used to avoid ripples produced during the amplification process and the light output will, uh, put will be taken uh, and at this side and also uh, you know that for the amplifier action to take place there is a need of uh, pumping energy so uh, for we will forward bias this pn junction and that will provides the pumping energy so let us uh, go to the uh, working of this case so let us see usually the semiconductor optical amplifier is a pn junction material and light is amplified through the stimulated emission when it propagates through the active region so the basic thing that is going here is the stimulated emission and you know that for uh, the stimulated um, uh, for the stimulated emission to uh, takes place uh, there is a need of Uh, there is a need of external energy and next one is the, here um, uh, depletion re region is formed between the p and n junctions and uh, that depletion region act as the active region and the two ends of the active region has anti reflection coating uh, and that anti reflection coating is used to eliminate the ripples in the amplifier gain so uh, in the case of a 
see here p type and n type materials are there you know that in the case of p type material at thermal equilibri equilibrium mm, see this is the diagram of the p type material you know that in the case of uh, p type or any other semiconductor material there is a valence band and a conduction band at the thermal equilibrium mm, in the case of p type material mm, uh, there is limited number of electrons in the valence uh, conduction band in the case of p type material but there will be uh, number of holes in the p type material you can see here so next and the major thing is that here stimulated emission takes place uh, for the optical amplification um, process and in this case at the thermal equilibrium p type semiconductor material um, has a smaller concentration of electrons in the conduction band um, and here um, population inversion process takes place when population inversion takes place that means that there is a higher concentration of electrons in the conduction band so how this population inversion takes place for population inversion to takes place uh, we are forward biasing this pn junction so when we are forward biasing a pn junction you know that uh, p type is connected to the positive terminal and n type is connected to the negative terminal so when it, we are forward biasing the depletion region between this p and n region reduces like um, uh, due to this forward biasing that means uh, the electrons from the n side will starts flowing to the p side right that is due to the uh, that is due to the drift that means there is a drift of electrons from the n type material to p region due to the forward biasing of this pn junction initially at the thermal equilibrium there will be lesser number of electrons in the p region but when we are forward biasing from the n material the number of electrons will mo starts moving to this p region that means the number of electrons in the conduction band will increases that is shown here when forward biasing the number of electrons in the conduction band of uh, p type increases due to the forward biasing that means there is a population inversion occurs in the p material when we are forward biasing this type of pn p, pn junction so uh, when we are giving an input light to this pn junction at the time when the population inversion is achieved that means when we are giving a light input that light energy will trigger the electrons in the pop, uh, electrons in the uh, population inverted state to go to the lower energy state you know that when population inversion takes place when uh, the electrons in the higher energy level gets smaller energy they will be um, moving to the uh, lower energy level by emitting photons so that process takes place here that means when uh, when an incoming photon appears that means incoming photon triggers these electrons in the population inverted state so that they will drop to lower energy state through the stimulated emission process due to the stimulated emission process along with this incident photon other photons will be emitted so one incoming photon stimulates many excited electrons to emit photons of equal energy so this produces an amplified optical signal so here the amplification process takes place due to the stimulated emission and uh, when stimulated emission occurs is means that uh, there will be a population inversion due to the forward biasing of this pn junction so when we are giving a light input to, to this p pn region that light will be absorbed by the electrons that is situating in this conduction band uh, where the population inversion was uh, achieved so that these electron uh, so that the electrons in the conduction band will absorb the incident light and they will go to the lower energy state by giving out the extra energy in the form of photons so that there will be an incident photon also there will be photons emitted due to this stimulated emission so there will be an amplification of the light output that is why uh, this soa that is uh, semiconductor optical amplifier produces uh, amplification of the optical signal see next we will go to the characteristics of the soa the major characteristics are the soa is polarization dependent that means we require a polarization maintaining fiber for semiconductor optical amplifier and its gain is relatively high and that is approximately in the range of 20 db and the output saturation um, uh, power will be 5 to 10 decibel per meter 
and also it has got a large bandwidth and it can operate in three windows of optical wavelength that means at 800 nanometer, 1300 nanometer and 1500 nanometer wavelength. That's, these are the three windows of operation of optical uh, signals. So this SOS, uh, semiconductor optical amplifiers can operate uh, at these three wavelength. Also this SOS are compact and easily integrated with other devices and also it can be integrated into arrays and uh, it has got high noise figure and crosstalk levels due to the nonlinear phenomena. Uh, usually this feature restricts the uh, use of this uh, semiconductor optical amplifiers. So it was a uh, disadvantage um, in the case of SOA. So let us see uh, the advantages and disadvantages. Um, advantages includes uh, that um, the major advantages of the SOA is that um, there can be integrated with other components on a single planar substrate. For example, in the case of a WDM transmitter, uh, that device may be constructed including uh, 10 lasers and a coupler um, uh, that are on the same substrate. In this case, the SOA could be integrated into the output uh, to overcome some of the coupling losses. Also, uh, the disadvantages of the SOA is that uh, it gives uh, power only in the range of milliwatt range. Uh, that means uh, uh, this is usually sufficient for single channel operation but in the uh, case of WDM systems usually um, few milliwatt per channel uh, power is required. Next, uh, disadvantage, next disadvantage is that um, coupling the input fiber into the chip tend to be very low C. Uh, the amplifier must have additional gain to overcome the loss on the input. Also, uh, that means uh, uh, when we are uh, coupling an uh, optical fiber with this type of that is with uh, um, uh, semiconductor optical amplifiers uh, there will be losses so we should provide additional gain to this SOS. Uh, also SOS are very um, uh, noisy uh, that means when we are um, amplifying the signal uh, noise signal also be amplified along with the input signal uh, and they are highly polarization sensitive so we require polarization maintaining fiber in that case. Also, they can produce a severe crosstalk uh, when multiple optical channels are amplified. So, uh, the last one characteristic that is uh, severe crosstalk uh, makes the SOS unusable as amplifier in the case of WDM systems. So, that's all about this topic. Thank you.